In St. Patrick's famous poem known as St. Patrick's Breastplate, he says, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. But the sixth century saint began his poem by first saying, I rise today through a mighty strength. What a beautiful reminder that each morning that we awaken, we do have a mighty strength in our lives. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity that St. Patrick was talking about. As I went for my walk today, I heard a splash and I came across a beaver who allowed me the privilege of filming him as he swam around. Years ago, beaver meat was popular during Lent as Catholic monks would eat the paws and tail on Fridays. The church believed that beavers qualified as fish rather than meat as they swam in the water, and so it was appropriate to have beaver on Fridays. This makes sense to me when years ago I came across a very old Swiss cookbook, and in it was a recipe for beaver. The meal was served to Swiss priests, and so it makes sense that this probably would have been a Lenten dish. The beaver also reminded me of one of Aesop's fables, the hunted beaver. In the 6th century Greek collection of moral tales, the story goes that the beaver was hunted by dogs, and so to save itself, it chewed off its tail and ran away. This gave the hunter the prize that he was after, saving the beaver's own life. Now, the moral of this slightly disturbing story is that a voluntary sacrifice may help avert even greater loss. What a great message for the season of Lent that we are in, and soon we'll be hearing about a voluntary sacrifice on the cross as Jesus died for our sins averting even a greater loss of our souls and our lives. So thank you, Mr. Beaver, for this wonderful time together. Back at the farm, I took out my recipe to make some pretzels. Now I know it's not a very Irish thing to make, but it is a Lenten recipe. Legend has it that in the seventh century, a monk wanted to make a bread for Lent without any eggs or dairy or fat. And so he created this simple recipe of just yeast and flour and water. And he twisted the dough to represent arms in a traditional prayer pose. And he called them little rewards. Middle Ages, monks would give them away to the poor as a religious symbol. By the 17th century, the interlocking loops of dough came to symbolize undying love. And it is recorded in 1614 in Switzerland, royal couples used a pretzel in their wedding ceremonies. Perhaps where we get the term, tying the knot. With some pretzels in my bag, I went to a local farm to visit the animals. And this little goat smelled my pretzel a mile away and he did not want what he was having for lunch, but was trying to get at my pretzel. Yes, it was feeding time at the farm. And as I watched these sheep enjoy their buffet of hay, my imagination went back to St. Patrick and I recalled reading the Confession of St. Patrick, in which he wrote in 450 AD, outlining how he came to serve God in such a powerful way. He starts his confession by saying, I, Patrick, a sinner, a most simple countryman. And then he continues to outline his adventures and his journey. He then recalls his time as a shepherd and what he learned. Patrick wrote, 
But after I reached Ireland, I used to pasture the flock each day, and I used to pray many times a day. More and more did the love of God and my fear of Him and faith increase, and my spirit was moved. I used to stay out in the forests and on the mountain, and I would wake up before daylight to pray in the snow, in icy coldness, in rain, and I used to feel neither ill nor any slothfulness, because now I see the spirit was burning in me at the time. Welcome to Old Stonewall Farm on this special St. Patrick's Day edition. I enjoy making pretzels in the season of Lent, but confession, I often make them earlier in the season. This, we're still journeying to Easter, so I think it's appropriate to have these pretzels. When I was serving congregations that had children, I remember I would do the pretzel making. It was a fun time to teach the children about um, how to be more prayerful in how the folded um, dough of the pretzel represented the folded arms of monks praying. When the children are grown up, they will say to me, Pastor Donna, I remember that time. And every time I eat a pretzel, I think about monks praying. And then I had another young adult tell me that she can't eat pretzels anymore without saying a prayer. So my husband loves them too. These homemade pretzels come the closest to Wawa pretzels. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Wawa chain of stores, but when we lived down in Maryland, there was a whole bunch of Wawas and the pretzels are amazing. So every time that I venture out of Vermont and I'm in an area that has a Wawa store, I need to stock up on pretzels. There was one time I was coming back from a trip and I made a stop and I had 20 big pretzels in my hands. The person behind me in the line, were just, he, he was just looking at me like I was crazy. And finally, I had to say to him, I'm from Vermont. We don't have Wawa's and my husband loves these pretzels. I happen to like the pretzels that I had when I was in Switzerland. When Ever I would go there for my former career. I was a jewelry editor, as many of you know. And every year in the springtime, there would be a big watch and jewelry fair. And basically, I feasted on pretzels. Over there, pretzels are sold like bread or rolls. Many of them are sliced open and um, in between, they're used like a sandwich. There's like ham and cheese and butter. And there's such a variety of pretzels to be found everywhere. I happen to love the ones that were just coated with sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and other kind of seeds and nuts. It was very crunchy. These come close to Wawa pretzels, so my husband is very happy about that. I wanted to make the pretzels on this St. Patrick's Day. I know, usually I make Irish soda bread or Irish stew. But St. Patrick's Day for me this year is more prayerful. And I found myself really remembering who this saint was. We have gotten so far away from remembering that St. Patrick's Day is a celebration of a saint. And it's not an excuse to get drunk on green beer. When I lived in Manhattan, you did not want to go out on the city streets when it was St. Patrick's Day. It was crazy. And I made the mistake one year, I had a late meeting and I found myself crossing over to Third Avenue. I lived on Lexington at the time, Midtown, Lexington and 36. And for some reason, I decided to cross over to Third Avenue and walk down and then just go back up to Lexington. So I thought that'd be safer and quieter on St. Patrick's Day. And I was so wrong. Turns out Third Avenue had a lot of Irish pubs and it was a madhouse. I couldn't wait to get home and just have my corned beef and cabbage by myself. And that was it. St. Patrick was indeed a real person and it was a sixth century uh, boy, he was 16, he was kidnapped from Scotland and brought to Ireland where he worked um, as a shepherd. It was his time there that he found God. He, when he did return to Scotland, he managed to escape 
he felt the call to go back to Ireland and share his faith with all the pagans. And so St. Patrick is the saint of Ireland and is known for bringing Christianity to the island. Before I go any further, for all of the Old Stonewall Farm family who are living in Ireland and are viewing it right now, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. They say everyone is Irish on this day, so, but a special happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. Other stories around St. Patrick, for example, uh, St. Patrick is known for explaining the Holy Trinity, the Holy Three in One, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how can it be? And often he used a, a clover, a shamrock, and used the leaves to say Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's three in one. He's also known for chasing out the snakes in Ireland. Those of you who are viewing from Ireland, is it true that you don't have any snakes? If so, please find me a thatched roof cottage from, I don't know, the 1500s, 1600s. You know I like old things. And uh, let me know and I'll be on the first flight over there to buy it. This year I found myself watching to really remember who this saint was and and how it was that he got to serve God in such a way. How did he really just open himself up to God's will? It's a struggle for us every day. How do we open ourselves up to what God wants? And prayer is a key to it. Prayer changes all things. It might not seem like Anything is happening when we are praying, but it is. There's so many wonderful stories of St. Patrick from explaining the Holy Trinity with the Shemrock to chasing out the snakes. We forget that he spent his first six years of his life, his time in Ireland, as a shepherd. And in the Confessions of St. Patrick, where he just writes, I'm not worthy, and yet God saw me, I'm just a humble countryman, and yet there is a paragraph in which he talks about how being a shepherd opened him up to the divine. Out in the elements all the time. He was out in the rain, he was out in the snow, he was out in the wind. He found the lost sheep, he had to tend to them, he had to save them, he had to help them. And through that, he felt a burning inside of him. He was never cold or hungry or wanting anything. And throughout all that, in the desolate wilderness, as he was a shepherd, he realized that 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 burning, that contentment, whatever it was inside of him, that was God with him. I really can't remember any St. Patrick's Day in which we, we talk about him being a shepherd and what did that mean to his life and what lessons we can learn. Shepherding can be very lonely. You're out there in the wilderness with you and the sheep and that's it. And it's only in that quiet time that we can hear God and Patrick heard God. A few weeks ago, my internet went out and I was not happy. I, well, when I finally got a hold of the company via the phone, they told me that it would be back probably within 24 to 72 hours. So anywhere from a day to three days, I would be without being connected to anyone. And that really freaked me out because I had a lot of work to do. But my reaction to not having internet was very telling. I found myself very anxious, felt this void that I didn't realize that the internet being connected all the time was filling. That I sat down and I realized I don't want to live like this. This is just not healthy. And that's when I realized too that many times throughout my day I have my phone right by my side and you know, the dinging of messages or a new Facebook post or a email from a friend that always took my time from what I was trying to do. Well, I emerged from this time of wilderness without having internet with a plan that I'm now going to set boundaries. And for work, it will be, I'll check um, like in the morning after breakfast in my devotionals. I've gotten into the bad habit of doing work email as I am trying to do my devotionals and light my candle and have my breakfast. I decided to do it like right after I have my breakfast and God time first. Then I'll check my work email and then maybe mid morning and then after lunch and then early afternoon and then right before 
I sign off and then that's it. It has been amazing setting those boundaries. I feel more focused. I feel more creative. I feel more like my old self. I feel calmer. And I realize that the world will go on if I'm not in it. It's kind of sobering, but they tell us that all the time when they talk about self-care. The self-care experts say, remember, you are expendable. No one is going to miss you at work. I've always known that, but I never lived that way. But now I'm living that way and it is a lot healthier. So I think back to what can we learn from Patrick's first six years in Ireland when he was shepherding in the quiet of shepherding that he heard God's still small voice and that led him to become the patron saint of Ireland and doing amazing things in God's name. What amazing things can you do in God's name if only, if only we found that quiet time? Of course, we can't talk about shepherding without talking about probably the best known psalm in the Bible, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's my favorite line, I shall not want. But there was always a line that intrigued me and I never quite understood it when it said, and he anoints my head with oil. Now I know the anointing of oil in the Old Testament was a sign of anointing a king. But when a shepherd pours oil onto the head of his sheep, it is a loving act. It has a purpose. The oil you see protects the sheep's head from getting cut and from any like briars or thorny bushes or whatnot that the sheep might get into. And so the oil is a protection and it also protects from, from pests and gnats and it protects the sheep from getting all cut up if another sheep decides to like butt heads with him. So the oil serves a purpose to, to keep the sheep safe and to make sure that they don't get hurt and that they're protected. Our shepherd is also wanting to protect us and, and trying his best to make sure that when we do butt heads, we don't get all mangled up and that the pests in life just then don't bother us. And I need a lot of oil right now, I think, on my head. And there's the part, my cup runneth over. And it ties back to the anointing of oil. A cup of oil is overflowing. The shepherd isn't stingy. He's not just going to dabble it on the head and save the rest later on. So on this St. Patrick's Day, when I think of Patrick in his early days as a shepherd, I can only imagine how, how powerfully he was touched when he was talking to God and thinking about God and realizing that God has been protecting him as well and that God isn't withholding that protection at all and that the love and the care that God shows him is just overflowing. It's abundant and will never run out. And because Patrick came to realize that he wanted to share it with others and he wanted to be that good shepherd. So while the world around us is partying up on March 17th, drinking green beer and having corned beef and cabbage and all that fun stuff, I find myself making pretzels in the shape of praying arms. And I remember to really go out there and listen to my good shepherd who has an abundance of care being poured out upon me and upon you. And so my friends, happy St. Patrick's Day, a day to remember the power of prayer and what can happen when you really open yourselves up to God. And now to end our time together with the words of St. Patrick. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me.